All right, what is up tycoons? What's up traders? For today's video, we're going to give an update on the Bone Shiba Swap token. All right, this is our current chart setup that we have. And if this looks a little complex to you guys, don't worry. It's actually pretty simple. I'm going to break it down. There's just a couple key things that I'm really looking at uh, when it comes to the main price levels right now. Uh, there's a couple signals on the RSI as well that we can look at. So make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. That way you guys don't miss any of my videos and updates on your favorite tokens as well as many other things. Um, now, <clears throat> to start off with, full disclaimer, uh, the content provided in this YouTube channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. I'm not a registered financial advisor or broker. So, you know, read through the full disclaimer. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and hop into it. And this is the previous video setup that we had, guys. So if you watch the last uh, Shiba video, okay, the Shiba swap video on Bone, you can see we actually just hit our wave five bullish price targets to the upside. Now, you know, we also went through a bearish scenario and I gave you guys the main levels to pay attention to, to look for the bearish scenario to play out and bring us back to that. 90 cent region and possibly even below we did not get that we held our major levels of support and got our wave four bounce and continued up to wave five and exactly hit our bullish price targets up to the upside right and so the reason we do this is because markets tend to move in five wave and three wave structures right and so um you know we can we can use some tools right here like for instance the set of these three lines right here are the fibonacci retracement levels okay and the reason we use the fibs is because nothing moves in a straight line up or in a straight line down rather you would get a move up retracement and then a continuation of the trend move down retracement continuation of the trend right that's how you can spot these trend retracements uh and trend continuation now, if you break through these retracement levels, right? So we had the big move up. If we would have came down, consolidated and broke through those retracement levels, that's when you're bearish below and you can potentially spot a downside reversal to retest some of your previous lows, right? So if you move down, retrace, consolidate, break those retracement levels, that's an upside reversal. And if you move up, retrace, consolidate and break through those retracement levels, that's a potential downside reversal. So that's the setup we had that we were looking for. All right, we uh, got past our initial breakout level 1.61, hit our first bullish price target, had a pullback back to our major levels of support, and then we pushed up higher ultimately and hit our next bullish price target of two. Um, so <clears throat> now that we've gone through that, okay, this is the current setup that we have right now. Now we did have a head and shoulders pattern that played out. Okay, if you take a look, right, we had a left shoulder here and we had a head. And then we got our right shoulder here and we broke this trend line right here, which was our neckline. We got a very clean uh, break. All right. And we came down and we actually hit some of our bearish price targets. OK, so remember what I said about the three wave structures that the market likes to make. If we take a look here, we can see that we ended up getting a one, two, three down and hit our bearish price targets down below. All right. So now that we have hit a majority of our bearish price targets, um, we still have a couple to the downside that we could potentially hit, right? And these are going to be key areas of support right around 96 cents and also 85 cents. Um, so, you know, if things happen to continue more bearish, okay, then those are going to be some of the key levels of support that I'm paying attention to, um, to look for a possible bounce. Now we, if we could definitely break through those, but those are going to be some of the key areas. Now, one thing that I want to highlight besides this head and shoulders pattern indicated by the left shoulder, head and right shoulder, we also did have something known as bearish divergence. So take a look at the circle here, how we have a high and then we have a higher high and here we have a high and then we actually have a lower high. So the relative strength index here, RSI, measures the relative strength of a token at its given level. So the price was clearly going up here in an uptrend, but the RSI was clearly going down. So we're losing relative strength as the price of the token is going up. That's a term known as bearish divergence. And we ended up forming this supply zone up here. Now, a supply zone is simply an area where there's an imbalance of sell orders that ultimately pushes price lower. If we remember the last chart, okay, these were our bullish price targets, right? So, um, you know, this is why we kind of have that supply zone is because there's going to be a lot of sell orders up here. And, you know, as bullish price targets, people are looking to sell up here and take profit off of this five wave structure. Okay, so we end up putting that supply zone up in there that we have now. Our supply zone is going to be roughly 1.97, 1.98, up to about 2.11. 
All right, that's our overhead supply zone. And that's going to be a big area of resistance, okay, um, for us if we do get a really big push up. Now, I mentioned that we got our three wave structure to the downside, and we talked about how markets like to move in three wave or five wave structures. So if we do get a bounce, okay, it ultimately could just be another retracement to continue the downtrend unless we break the major retracement levels, right? Like I spoke about, if we come down, retrace, consolidate, and then break through these levels, that's when we can come up and potentially uh, retest our previous supply zone. And if we can break through the supply zone, we can hit our new bullish price targets of 2.19 as well as 2.51. Now, something that I'm really looking at currently is this 1.15 support uh, resistance level. Okay, it was prior support. We bounced on it for about a week or so. Uh, ultimately, we ended up flipping it to resistance uh, for about three days right here. And we're currently battling it as resistance right now. But that initial bearish divergence trend line that we rejected here, here, and here as well, if you take a look, we're actually just now breaking out above it. So two things can happen, right? We can get the breakout, obviously, and have a very nice rally. Or, right, a key signal that you can look for is a look above and fail, right? And I mentioned this in a few of my videos. The reason that a look above and fail is significant is because on this breakout, bulls are presented the opportunity to really push price up higher, right? And really push, take advantage of the opportunity on the breakout. But if we break out and come back down below this trend line, it's going to signify a look above and fail and really show that uh, bears and sellers are in control. And the reason being is because those bulls had the opportunity, bulls and buyers had the opportunity, did not take advantage of it. And it shows that sellers were still in control, even on a breakout. So pay close attention to that. If you do break out and pull back, you want to see it retest this trend line as support now instead of resistance and push up higher. Uh, otherwise, a look above and fail is going to be pretty bearish. And most likely we're going to head down towards some of those bearish price targets. Okay. Now, I mentioned earlier our major retracement levels, all right, specifically those are going to be 1.544, 1.44, and 1.33. So those uh, actually came out pretty nicely. Um, but yeah, so we'll be bullish back above there, okay? If we can break out, flip that to support from resistance, try to push higher. Ultimately, all of this is healthy retracement territory, and it makes sense for us to get some type of a retracement after hitting our wave three targets um, for, you know, a wave four. Now we'll see if that can be the end of this bearish structure and we can try to form some type of new bullish structure. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but for now, you know, we are trying to break out on the RSI. If we can get above that 1.157 uh, uh, resistance level, the next one above is going to be 1.31, as well as your major retracement levels right here that I gave you guys as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And I do these viewer requests every single week. So if you want to see your token, your crypto, and the next one, all you got to do is comment down below.